Hello there, friends and followers, and welcome to this X-Plane 11 video. Today we are Qantas 441 service from Sydney to Melbourne in Australia. Our flight today to Melbourne is approximately 1 hour and 40 minutes, and we're going to be cruising at 34,000 feet. The weather is calm here at Sydney, and uh, we were expecting some clouds as we approach our destination. So, let us get started. We are currently situated at the International Terminal at Sydney, and the reason I've selected this aircraft position is that it is closer in proximity to our departing runway today, which is 3-4 left. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to Configure Customize, Display and Variance, and we're going to go to page number 2, and we're going to make sure the multi-mode receiver is selected as Yes. The ground power unit is currently connected, and we can begin with the um, cockpit preparation. So let's go ahead and uh, look here at over overhead panel and we're going to turn on the battery on and ground power unit is now on and let's see here we're going to just go back up and we're going to align the IRS's IRS's to nav mode. There we go and next uh, let's see here uh, all looks good on this side all looks good on this side uh, we're going to come down here arm the emergency lights we'll worry about the fasten and uh, smoking signs later uh, we'll come here and turn on the window heat window heat is on we're going to turn on the hydraulics so the first officer can go and check um, during the walk around that there are no leaks and that everything is in working order uh, Packs we're going to put those on high for now AP bleed we don't need at this point and we're going to set the flight altitude to 340 which is our final cruise altitude today for this flight Okay position light steady and now we can head over to the FMC and start programming the flight plan. So FMC, uh, everything looks good here. Position initialization. We are currently at Yankee Sierra. Oops. Yankee Sierra Sierra Yankee. And that's the reference airport. We're going to go to the next page and grab the GPS position and stick it right here. Let's go to the route. We are at Yankee Sierra Sierra Yankee and Melbourne is Yankee Mike Mike Lima. Our flight number today, we are Qantas 441 and this is a real world route. Uh, Qantas 441. And then we can go to the departures. And today we're going to be departing through the ANCOB 1 uh, SID, runway 34 left. 34 left, and let's take a look at the transition here, real quick. And the transition for our departure today is Whiskey Oscar Lima, and that is selected. Let's go to the routes page now and activate and execute. All right, let's go to the next page. As you can see, we have um, the ANCOB 1 through uh, Whiskey uh, Oscar Lima. I've adjusted the view so that we can uh, easily look at the flight plan in the iPad. And the next waypoint is, uh, is an airway, actually. Uh, it's Hotel 65. Hotel 65. And then we're going to exit at Razi. And then we're going to take Quebec 29, Quebec 29, to Lizzie. And then it's going to be our approach into um, Melbourne. And we are going to be taking the Lizzie 8 Alpha Star uh, GLS runway 27. So we're going to execute and uh, we're going to go to the departures uh, and arrivals and we're going to select the arrival and there you have that's the one Lizzie 8 Alpha is the one we're interested in and we're going to select 
GLS. There's GLSC, GLS 3.4. Um, okay, so that's the one we want here, which is GLS C27. Execute. And we're good. And now we are pretty much done with the flight plan. Let's just make sure that there are no discontinuities and there are none. And now we can go to the um, legs RTE data where there we go. And now with the performance uh, initialization, uh, let's see here. We're going to need the first page. There we go. Uh, oh, we did not set the fuel, I think. So we need to set the fuel. Uh, the fuel we need is uh, about 14, was it? Let me check one more time here. Uh, 14,166 pounds of fuel. Okay, let's do that. So we're just going to say 14,100. 14.1. Actually, 0.2. And then we can go back to the flight plan here. So we're going to, uh, the zero fuel is 103.7 reserves. The final reserves is 2397, so 2.4. 2.4. The cost index is 26 right here. Cruise altitude is 34,000 feet. The average wind that we're going to enter into the FMC is 27752, uh, so 52 knots at 277 degrees to 27752. And uh, standard, the average ESA is zero, so we're just going to say zero here. And ex uh, the transition altitude uh, in, according to what I've uh, According to, what, to my memory, is uh, 11,000 feet in, uh, in Australia. So we're going to set that here. Uh, correct me, guys, if I'm wrong as far as the transition altitude is concerned. And then we're going to say execute. We're going to go to the N1 limit. The outside temperature is 23 Celsius. And that is now set. And we're going to derate takeoff uh, we're going to do flaps five and that gives us center of gravity 24.1 percent and a trim of 4.38 our v1 is 123 v rotate 124 and v2 is 135 all right let's set our trim that's about right and legs page and now everything is looking good Okay, I'm going to set this to climb, and what we're going to do is put this uh, iPad back. One thing I want to show you before we uh, continue is this is the MMR unit, and as you can see now, you can select the multi-mode receiver, you can select VORs, you can select ILS, or you can select GLS, which is what we are interested in today for this flight. Uh, this is the very first time I'm going to do a GLS approach, so I'm not really sure what to expect, but it should be straightforward. We should be able to select the GLS channel, uh, set it to the active, uh, put the approach course, and things should be um, straightforward from there. Uh, so let's see here. Okay, so we're going to come back to the, uh, we're going to say start the leg. And uh, let's go ahead and grab the altimeter. Actually, let's start the APU. All right, APU started. And we're going to turn on the non-smoking and fasten seatbelt signs. All right, we're just going to wait for the APU. In the meantime, we can listen to ATIS. Yankee, Sierra, Sierra, Yankee, airport information, Gulf, zero, four, zero, zero, Zulu, weather, wind, zero, four, seven, at, one, seven, visibility, one, zero, thousand, sky clear, temperature, two, three, dew point, 
for QNH1013. Advice on initial contact, you have information. Golf. Okay, information Golf1013 for uh, our QNH. So everything is looking good here. All right, so let's take a look. All right, APU is now available. So we're going to start the APU. Let's turn on the fuel pumps. APU bleed is on and engine bleeds are off. Okay. Auto brake to reject a takeoff. And uh, let's set our speeds now. So we're going to come here and set uh, the speed to V2, which is 135. And let's just talk to our passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, welcome aboard our flight today. We're wrapping up the final paperwork here, so get you on your way momentarily. I want to thank you so much for your company, and the massive way invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Again, welcome aboard. All right, the flight directors are on, speed is set, altitude is set. The heading, our departing runway is 3-4 left, uh, so I've set the heading bug to runway heading, uh, which is 3-4-0. We are pretty much ready to start our engines. Uh, we're gonna set this to the legs page, set this to climb, and we're gonna turn on the terrain and airport information on the first officer's side, and we're gonna use uh, the weather. The uh, TCAS is on standby, and we're squawking uh, code 2000, that's perfectly fine. We're gonna turn on the anti-collision light, and let's uh, call the pushback truck. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dismiss the... All uh, right, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Oh, connected and bypass been inserted. Uh, release the parking brake when you're ready. All right, we are ready to go. Let's release the parking brake. All right, starting the pushback and you may spool them. Clear to start engines. All right, we have clearance to start our engines. We're going to turn off the packs. And we can now start the engines, and we're going to start as it is always the case with engine with the uh, right engine. So we'll go to ground, and we're going to watch the um, engine spool now. 24% fuel. Alright, we have a good start on the right engine. Let's go ahead and start the left engine. Twenty-four percent and fuel is coming on. Alright, and we have a good start on both engines now. We're gonna put both engines on first let's turn on the chins. Engine selectors to continuous. All right, mate. Operation complete. Uh, go ahead and set the parking brake. All right, let's set the parking brake. All right, mate. Disconnecting toes. Stand by. All right. Yo damper is on. Everything looks good here. Everything looks good here. Um, all is good here. We're going to turn on the probe heat. Everything else is good. Packs on auto. Isolation valve on auto. Engine bleeds are on, APU bleed is off, and we can now turn off the APU. We're just going to wait for the uh, ground services to clear now, and we're going to set our flaps to flaps 5 oh, for departure. Bypass pin uh, is removed. Thumbs up on the left, and uh, catch you next time. Have a safe flight. All right, so we are clear. Let's go ahead and set flaps 5. All right, and I'm going to set the, uh, the TCAS so we don't forget it to TARA. 
flaps 5 are set. Let's go ahead and turn on the runway turnoff lights and taxi lights. And we are now ready to taxi to the runway. We are now on our way to runway 34 left for departure. I'm really impressed with all the updates and the development on the Zebo 737. Uh, truly uh, a remarkable aircraft uh, and it's free. Uh, this is a freeware um, aircraft and it's a result of years of development, uh, enhancements and improvements. Uh, it is by far the very best 737 uh, in my view today for a flight sim platform. Um, it's definitely uh, now in its current state it's better than the PMDG 737 if you ask me. Uh, with all the features that it's got and all the updates it's receiving on almost daily basis. All right, we're gonna bring the aircraft to a complete stop right over here and we're gonna set the parking brake. All right, landing lights on, runway turn off, lights and taxi off. Um, the wing and wheel lights are on and everything else looks good to me. Auto okay, throttle is engaged. All right, let's release the parking brake and let's depart Sydney. Parking brake released. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are cleared for takeoff. Let's take it to 40%. And Toga. Locked, auto brake off. And we continue our climb now uh, to 34,000 feet. I am, by the way, using the um, X Vision Vivid preset uh, in this video. I'm starting to like this preset more than the uh, immersive uh, preset. Looks really good. The cloud textures are um, better in my view. And uh, this uh, Vivid preset has uh, better sky colors as well throughout the day. Coming up to 900,000 feet and all is looking good. 10,000 feet. Let's turn off the landing lights and the wheel and wing lights. We're coming up now to the transition altitude of 11,000 feet. Right, 11,000 feet and barrel reference set to standard. All right, let's release the cabin crew.
seat belt signs off all right everything's looking good i will see you guys at 34,000 feet enjoy the flight welcome back folks we are now cruising at our final cruise altitude of 34,000 feet now just a little bit of information on um, mmr and uh, gbas and all that good stuff so gbas is uh, is something new it is uh, better than the ils uh, approach in some ways um, it stands for ground-based augmentation system it augments the existing global positioning system GPS utilized um, by providing connections to the aircraft in the vicinity of an airport in order to improve the accuracy and uh, provide integrity for these aircraft GPS navigational position. The goal of GPS implementation is to provide an alternative to the instrument landing approach supporting the full range of approach and landing operations. So what are the benefits of uh, GBAS and how is it better than um, ILS? Uh, GBAS has several advantages uh, in comparison to traditional ILS. One GBAS station can support multiple runway ends and reduce the total number of systems at an airport. Uh, this reduces the um, VHF requirement and simplifies the airport infrastructure. Unlike ILS, which requires one frequency per system, a GBAS only requires one VHF assignment for up to 48 individual approach procedures. The GBAS, uh, as a result, has more flexible sitting criteria, allowing the GBAS to serve runways which ILS is unable to support. A GBAS is sighted to minimize critical areas which place few restrictions on aircraft movement during ground taxi and air operations. GBAS approach guidance is steadier than ILS approach guidance. Also, it requires less frequent flight inspections compared to those required of ILS systems. So this is just a glimpse uh, of what uh, the GBAS offer offers over um, ILS. And of course, you'd have to have an aircraft equipped with uh, uh, with an MMR uh, so that you can uh, actually fly a GLS uh, approach and uh, again this is the unit here and uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually set the frequencies and the approach course uh, as we get closer to uh, the top of uh, descent so um, one note on the review that I've done of the McKnight uh, Boeing 787 uh, there were uh, a lot of people <clears throat> that were telling me why didn't you wait until version 1.4 uh, first of all at the time of making the video uh, version 1.3.10 was the official release version uh, <clears throat> some folks were telling me that uh, you should have waited and it's it's a much better version and i agree that it is a much better version than the previous version but my overall assessment of that aircraft remains exactly the same uh, i still do not recommend it uh, based on its price and the flaws it has uh, i do not recommend its purchase unless of course you are um, one of those guys that like to support developers like i do and i have purchased the mcknight in fact, I have purchased both of them. I purchased the one in, uh, I believe, was some somewhere in the 20 range, and then the Aviator edition came out. And I purchased that one as well, um, and I gave the aircraft uh, some exposure on the channel as well. Uh, but I am always bound to stating uh, my honest and objective opinion. Uh, I do uh, support the developers. Uh, and I believe they've approached me in, in early stages of the project to join their Discord and give them some tips. Now, I'd have to say it was my bad that I did not really uh, contribute too much in terms of feedback on the actual aircraft. Uh, but nonetheless, I've purchased both versions of the aircraft, I believe, until this moment that I gave it a very fair review on the channel. And if it is improved beyond 
uh, my initial assessment I will definitely make another video and, and give you my honest feedback but when you have something like this Zebo, uh, it, it would be very difficult to swallow something that is of lesser quality at, uh, at any price uh, because the Zebo is free uh, and the McKnight costs $49 or $45.95 something like that so, um, in all honesty, uh, my assessment, I believe, was a fair assessment of the aircraft. And then there was a comment on the, on the cinematic that I provided for the Concorde. And uh, the comment was, uh, you know, you've torn apart the McKnight. Why no comment on this aircraft? Well, first of all, um, a cinematic video, normally when I do a cinematic video, is I want to showcase the aircraft. So it is not a review of the aircraft. And if I were to make a review of the Concorde, it would definitely receive better points than the McKnight, um, even though it is uh, uh, actually priced higher. It's, I believe, $54. But if you look at the Concorde uh, and the work that has gone into both the exterior model, the interior modeling, the sounds on that aircraft, and all the features, uh, it is without a doubt, uh, far better made aircraft than the McKnight. Uh, it's, it's far more sophisticated. It's got a lot more features and definitely a lot more work. It is more authentic, uh, in my view. Uh, it, it's, it is a closer representation of what the Concorde is. Uh, of course, it's still very missing, but then the developer makes a very clear disclaimer on the product page saying that this aircraft is early access. If you're not comfortable with early access, please don't buy it. Um, so he states that very clearly, whereas the McKnight is a release aircraft. Uh, so there is a huge difference there uh, where the, uh, the developer uh, of the Concorde has explicitly stated that this aircraft is not finished. And in no way, shape or form is he encouraging anybody to purchase the aircraft if they're not comfortable with early access and supporting him and supporting the project so that's the difference so anyway uh, we are now um, let's see here let's take a quick look uh, we are 188 nautical miles from our top of descent point so I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the flight and I will check back with you about 30 nautical miles from the top of descent where we will configure the aircraft for approach and landing at Melbourne Welcome back folks, uh, we are approximately 40 nautical miles now from top of descent so we're going to start preparing the aircraft for our approach and landing into Melbourne and the first thing we're going to do, we're going to head over here to the initial uh, approach reference and we're going to set the flaps to flaps 30 and the approach speed to 137 knots and that is set here now we're going to note the, uh, the GLS uh, channel for uh, runway 27. As you can see, it is 21529. And we're going to come down here and set it to, let's see here, 21529. 21259. And we're going to set it as the active frequency or channel. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to change the mode first to GLS and we're going to enter 21259 and set it to the active frequency um, so pretty much kind of like the how the ILS works uh, and we're going to set the approach course to 263 so we're going to set that to 263 and 263 on this side as well And that is also set now. The uh, altitude approach uh, platform or platform altitude is 2,500 feet. So we're going to set that to 2,500 feet. And there we go. We are all set now. And we are approximately 29 nautical miles from top of descent. 
So we should begin the automatic descent momentarily, and uh, we should be in uh, Melbourne in about 20 minutes from now. And we should uh, begin the automatic descent momentarily here. As you can see, this is the top of descent uh, mark, and there we go. We have now begun the automatic descent uh, to 2,500 feet. And uh, we have to be uh, aware that there is uh, one restriction here that by this waypoint here, we need to be below 9,000 feet and uh, 230 knots. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head over here and we're gonna turn on the seatbelt signs and inform cabin crew to prepare the aircraft for landing. We are now approaching our um, star into Melbourne. And as you can see, this is the decel point and this is the beginning of our uh, star. We are at uh, 13,600 feet. Uh, so we're doing fine in terms of our altitude. I'm gonna set the auto brake to two uh, in preparation for uh, our landing. And we're gonna come over here PA system and prepare the cabin for a landing. All right, barrel reference is 1010. So let's set that 1010. And we're going to do the same thing here 1010. All right, and now we're descending below 10,000. And we need to be below 9,000 uh, right over here. And we are looking good now, and momentarily uh, we will uh, hit the 10,000 feet mark, and we're going to turn on our landing lights right now. There we go. Landing lights, runway turn off lights, um, let's see here, wing and wheel lights. You know what, let's turn on the logo lights as well. And as you can see, this is the restriction here. Uh, and we are looking good in terms of meeting that restriction requirement where we need to be below 900,000 feet. And we're still at 240. Let's take a look here. Actually, we need to be at uh, 230 knots. But at this point, I'm just going to let the aircraft do its thing. Here's the, the, the second diesel point. All right, so we have begun now our turn towards uh, Melbourne. And as you can see, we are not too far away from Melbourne now. I've extended the speed brake and I had to do this uh, several times during this flight to, uh, to ensure that the speed is uh, at, the right, uh, at the right spot for our flight. We continue now our descent and uh, we We'll begin the final approach uh, deceleration in terms of our speed momentarily. Uh, we need to be at 2500. Uh, this is, uh, as you can see here, uh, at uh, VSAS. And uh, we are looking good. Uh, the runway should be right ahead of us now. So what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to engage the approach button. There we go, approach. Uh, we'll just wait for the aircraft now to actually what I'm going to do is uh, VS and I am going to reduce our speed now to 200 actually 194 knots I'm going to extend the speed brake and increase our rate of descent just a bit to a thousand feet per minute okay and at this point we're going to reduce our speed to 157 knots all right and here we go flaps one flaps five we are now at exactly 2500 feet okay and at this point I'm going to go gear down and flaps 15 reduce our speed 244 knots
and at this point we're going to take over, disable the autopilot. And my aircraft. And we're going to go to flaps 30 and 137. There must be something I didn't do right because we did not really get the... Uh, I'm not sure actually this is the very first time I do uh, a GLS approach. But we're a bit off here. Alright, I'm going to kill the auto throttle as well. And my aircraft. Definitely some crosswind there. high all right we need to mark the speed break okay we are good now Feet stabilized, Mr. Birch altitude set. Alright, we're too fast. I got I'm carried away there two, with the speed. Seven. We need to reduce our speed. And we're a bit too high as well. here as we uh, come into land. 200. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of right rudder. 100. Our landing very unstable approach uh, to uh, to the runway um, the speed that uh, I wasn't able to control the speed properly and uh, but nevertheless uh, I think the landing overall was okay I'm not sure uh, the um, so as far as the so we had the right frequency here I'm not sure what else we need to do in order to actually perform the GLS approach all right, let's bring the aircraft to a complete stop now and take a look at our landing. Our landing was uh, a rough landing, uh, but there was some gusting winds there, so uh, I'll take it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.